Thank you for choosing LawLine.com to fulfill your online CLE needs. Please note, in this lecture there are two separate embedded verification codes that you must fill in at the evaluation form at the end in order to receive your credit. It is recommended that you write down each code when you hear them mentioned so you have them saved for the end. If you have any questions during the lecture or afterwards, please email us at support at LawLine.com. Thank you and enjoy. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Gottlieb, and today's lecture is entitled, An Attorney's Guide to Understanding Financial Statements. I'm a certified public accountant in the state of New York, and I have extensive experience in lecturing. In addition to being a CPA, I have a master's in tax and a variety of the credentials and, um, in business valuation and forensic accounting. Today's discussion about financial statements is probably something you want to avoid. Maybe that's why you went to law school. But the truth is, is that as a practicing attorney, you need to have a clear understanding of not only how financial statements are prepared, but what, what is the true purpose of them and how you need to be able to understand and read them to service your clientele. Whether you are a traditional business uh, attorney that services the business community, or you specialize in uh, disciplines such as personal injury or uh, tax, or, what, or other types of disciplines, matrimonial actions, family law, you need to understand this area of practice. Financial statements are comprised of three primary different types of statements. The first one being a balance sheet, the second one being an income statement, and the third being a statement of cash flows. A balance sheet provides information regarding the assets, liabilities, and equity of the business. An income statement provides the revenues, expenses, and the net of those two are the, is the net income or the net loss of the business. A statement of cash flows provides a reconciliation between the opening and cash balance of the business, identifying not only the income that's produced from the business, but also the increases and decreases in the assets and liabilities. The, the asset section of the balance sheet is comprised of three basic parts. The first one being current assets, then there's fixed assets, and there's long-term or non-current assets. The current assets are those assets that are commonly converted, are able to be converted into cash within one year. In fact, these assets or those assets are considered to be liquid. Examples of current assets are, of course, cash, but also there's accounts receivable, there's, account, there's inventory, prepaid expenses, and other current assets. The fixed assets are comprised of categories or accounts that are like machinery, equipment, furniture, fixtures, land, uh, building, leasehold improvements. And finally, there's non-current or long-term assets. And long-term assets are those assets that are not going to be, by design or intent, be converted into cash within one year. On the liability side, we have, obviously, current liabilities and non-current liabilities. Like the current assets section of the balance sheet, the current liability section of the balance sheet identifies those accounts that are going to be paid within the next calendar year. Now, current liabilities commonly include accounts payable, accrued expenses, taxes payable, payroll taxes payable, sales taxes payable, and other current liabilities. Non-current or long-term liabilities are those accounts that are traditionally going to be not going to be paid within the next calendar year. These may be long-term debt and other notes and obligations of the business. The, th the third and final section of the balance sheet is dependent upon the type of entity that the business is operating out of. In a traditional corporation, the equity section of the balance sheet is, called, is comprised of common stock, retain earnings, sometimes treasury stock, and additional paid in capital. When a business is actually organized and incorporated and shares of stock are issued, authorized and issued, the par value of the stock is included within the common stock or common shares 
of the equity section of the balance sheet. Any amounts that the owners of the business pay above and beyond the par value of the stock is recorded as additional or paid in capital. Now, other categories in the equity section pertain to, like treasury stock, pertain to when a company buys back its shares. And we'll probably get back to that in a little later. The final section of the equity part uh, of the balance sheet is retained earnings. And retained earnings is nothing more than the bucket that accumulates all the profits and all the losses of the business. So again, in summary, the balance sheet is comprised of three main elements, the asset section, the liability section, and the equity section. And within each of these sections, there are subsections that, that provide the current and long-term portions of the accounts. Before we talk about the income statement, I just want to remind everyone that the financial statement is really the end product of an accumulation of activity that includes all the accounting work that is done by a corporation. Whether a company is a multi-million dollar company or a small company, the basic accounting records stem from the recording of transactions from a checkbook, bank statements, cash disbursements journal, cash receipts journal, maybe a purchase journal or a sales journal. Now today's lecture, we're not going to talk about how all that accounting information is is accumulated. After all, for many of you, you want to avoid that type of work, so that's why you chose the legal profession. But as an attorney, you need to understand that the financial statement is nothing more than a summary of this information. And in fact, if you have any questions or inquiries in regards to these figures, you may yourself want to review that the underlying material or in some instances engage an accountant uh, to help you with that task. Let's talk about an income statement for a moment. Well, but before we talk about an income statement, I just want to mention one other thing about a balance sheet. A balance sheet is what we call an as of statement because it's produced as of a certain date. Now, what that means is that the picture that it produces is tantamount to a picture that's made from a Polaroid camera. If you have a balance sheet as of December 31st, it has certain assets, liabilities, and equity as of that date. But if you could perform or prepare a balance sheet the day before December 30th or the day after January 1st, the balance sheet can be completely different. That's why when we try to explain it to, to people, we, we express it in the form of the Polaroid camera. If you were to take a picture of someone from one point of view today, they'd be wearing one color outfit. If you took a picture of them the next day, their facial expression would be different. They'd probably be wearing another outfit. So just like a Polaroid picture, a camera snapshot, a balance sheet is different from day to day. Now let's go back to the income statement. As I said before, the income statement is nothing more than a, a listing of the revenues, expenses, and the net income of the business. Now, unlike the balance sheet in which it is a as of statement, an income statement is from one period to the other, tantamount to a video camera. So when you're looking at an income statement, you're looking at the activity of the business, its results of operations, from the beginning of a period to the end of a period. Now, sometimes financial statements are prepared on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. Regardless, it is for a period ending. Now, there happens to be a relationship between the income statement and the balance sheet, and that relationship is the net income. The net income of the business is the connection between these two statements, because whatever the net income or loss is on the income statement, that figure is closed out or consolidated within the equity section of the balance sheet. Now, it's important to understand that income statements have, can be different for different types of businesses. For instance, if you have a business like a law firm or a medical practice in which they just collect income and they pay expenses, the income statement is rather simple. You have fees collected, expenses paid, and net income. But if your business 
if the, or the business that you're working with is more sophisticated and manufactures a product and has different types of expenses, then you could have a classified income statement that identifies all these different components separately. Now, what this means? Well, this means that you can have revenues less cost of sales equals gross profit. And that gross profit, you can from that gross profit, you can determine the gross profit margin. From that gross profit, we can, you can deduct selling and administrative expenses and general administrative expenses. And then you can get a, a, a subtotal, which is commonly referred to as the, the income or loss from operations. From that subtotal, you then have items that are maybe extraordinary or income taxes to come up to the net income. Now, truth be told, an income statement can be as sophisticated or as simple as the business. And in many instances, once you're able to be comfortable with financial statements, you in fact may be able to use a financial statement as a tool, the income statement actually, the income statement as a tool to determine if there are things that require clarification. Again, attorneys don't frequently look at financial statements with the eye of an accountant and are interested in how the books and records were compiled. What they're looking for is they're looking for some evidence or some symptoms that would produce answers to questions they may have. For instance, if we have a business and its gross sales are $100 and its cost of sales are $40 and its, net, uh, its gross profit is $60, that's year one. We have a 60% gross profit margin. In year two, when we have the same company and we look, we have $100 worth of gross sales and our cost of sales is $60 and our gross profit is $40, we now have a 40% gross profit margin. The reason why this is important for you to understand is because you need to be able to identify that when you have um, comparable financial statements together, income statements together, you can identify problems and issues that you may want to further explore by comparing the gross profit percentages from one year to another. As accountants, we call this a common size analysis. This common size analysis is not only performed at the gross profit margin, but throughout a variety of, throughout the entire um, income statement analysis. So you will commonly see an income statement that has real dollars in one column, and the next column you may have it as a percentage. That percentage column is called the common size analysis. As forensic accountants, we commonly use this common size analysis to identify trends, problems, misclassifications, and even errors. Okay. So now the third statement I just want to talk about very quickly is the statement of cash flows. And as I had said in the beginning of our... Of our Please take a moment to write down lawline.com's first verification code. Lawline.com's first verification code is advice, all in lowercase, A-D-V-I-C-E, advice. Our um, lecture, the statement of cash flows is nothing more than a reconciliation of the opening and ending cash balance. It starts with the income, net income from the income statement, and adjusts its reconciliation for not only non-cash transactions, such as depreciation and amortization, but then the changes, the increase in de increases and decreases in assets and liabilities. When you combine all those elements, you're able to reconcile cash. Now, the reason why it's very important to reconcile cash is because you want to be able to look at one piece of paper and identify exactly how the company has been able to account for its increase or decrease in cash. This reconciliation not only shows, as I said before, the, the income, but it also shows increases in investment, increases and decreases in financing, and other attributes associated with the changes in balance sheet items.